the plan of God is that you and now we should establish a relationship with him. The plan of God, you know the meaning of relationship, right? Yes, eh? yes, you are someone who establish a relationship with, you know the person. You know what he, what he hates, what he loves, what he does, and his favorite, his best color, and where he goes, everything about him, you know the person. So the kind of relationship God wants you to have with him is more than just coming to church, being a Christian. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me? Yes, it's more than just coming to church, being a Christian, coming to fellowship, and for Sunday service, you carry your Bible, you just come to church, and the Pharisees are said, this is no. God wants you to have a personal relationship with him. Are you hearing what I'm saying at all? God wants you to have a personal relationship with who? With him. What kind of relationship? A personal relationship. Now look at this. Over the years I've been with God and I've been working for him. There is one thing I enjoy. Can I tell you? Can I tell you what I enjoy? I have a close relationship with him. Very close. Very close. I had him talk. He speaks to my ear. He whispers to my heart. He tells me, son, don't go there. Son, don't do that. Son, stop there. Son, don't talk that. Don't, son, don't do that. Because why? I have established a relationship with him. Are you ready now? Now, take a look of our biological parents, our fathers. The father, the father you have, the one who gave that to you. You can't agree with me that any child who was brought up without love, he lives to see every man, especially the female. She, he lives to see every man, she lives to see every man to be a wicked man, right? Those who were rejected at their infant stage, they were rejected with their mother. They were sent out of the home and their mother was frustrated. Never know where to go, what to do, the next step to take. And she ended up begging. And she begged and begged but she brought the child up and the child became mature. She went to a nursery school, she finished a nursery school, a primary school she finished, a secondary school she finished, a higher school she finished. And the day came, a man from nowhere showed up and said to the, 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 the girl, I said, I'm your father. What do you expect to be the reaction of the baby, of the girl, to the father, to her father? What do you expect? Huh? Talk to me. What do you expect to be the reaction of that girl to her father? He's going to deny the father. It's possible we stone her father. And do you know the question she's going to ask? Where have you been over this year that we suffering? I have seen so many people, many people around the world, in Nigeria, everywhere in the, in the world. I see so many people, when you talk to them about our father law, they look at you, they, they ask you, what kind of law? I've never had a man in the world say to me, I love you. There are people like that here. Your father, since you were born, never for one look at your face and say, son, doctor, I cherish you. You are the best thing that have ever happened to me. Am I going to get you away? And no matter what you do for your father, you do for your parents, and they look at your face and say, son, I just want to appreciate your coming. I'm proud that I'm your father. Till it makes you happy. It gives you joy. I might say something. Or say, let's assume after you did everything for your father, your father don't look at you and say, you are a disgrace. How do you feel? You know, when you have a biological father and he look at you, every day he appreciates you. And you look at and say, son, I, I, I'm, I'm proud to be your father. You are a good son. I appreciate you. I cherish you. You are the best among God. It makes you, it makes you to do more. It makes you to do more. It makes you to what? To do more for him. It makes you happy. That you have someone telling you, I love you. You have someone telling you, I appreciate you. You have someone telling you, I cherish you. You have someone telling you, how much you are important to him or her. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what happens? What happens when God, when God just sits somewhere watching, expecting you to walk up to him one day and say, Jesus, I love you. And he look and he watch Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you will come to the church and the choir mistress or the prayer or whatever, the praise leader, say, lift up your hands and let us worship God. You just hold your hands. 
They say, open your mouth, appreciate God, tell him how much you love him. He said, what are they doing? They said in the church, let us open our mouth and thank this God who has been protecting us for January. He said, I don't know anything concerning January. Am I might say something? Yes. Now, let me ask you a simple question. With that kind of condition, will God help God be happy with you? Yes. If your biological father treats you right and you're happy, or you treat your biological father right and he's happy, talk less of God. The God who watch you from, who watch you from in your mother's womb, the God who watch you from, who watch over you while you were still a sperm inside, who watch over you when you formed, you became a baby, who watch you the first month, the second month, the third month, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, and the ninth month you came to life. And the God who preserved you from that nine month till when you can be called a man, a woman today. That God, you cannot say, Lord, I love you. You cannot take a day aside out of several days you have in a week and say, Lord, if not you, I don't know where I would have been. You cannot stand and walk up in the morning. Now look at, you went to bed, you woke up, you don't know how you woke up. You don't know what happened during the night, but you just say yourself, head is strong. I might say something to someone. Yes. While you were sleeping, the enemy came to touch you. But the God who preserved you from the mother's who was there to say to the enemy, touch not my mother, and do my prophet no harm. That is the God I am talking about. That is the God when your father and your mother, when you were coming up, they cast you out of the house. They said, leave the house. You are no brain. They said, leave the house. You are nobody. That God who saw you when you left the room at night, midnight, you were still in secondary school. You were still in primary school. You were still in a social when your mother walked you out of the house one night. But that God came at night. I said, my daughter, my son, no matter where they cast you to, I am there to protect you. No matter where they brought you, I am there to protect you. I am talking about that God. I am talking about that God. I am talking about that God. When your parents, your father, your mother look at your face and say to you, my son, I know you can never become anything. I know you are zero. And then God took you from nowhere to somewhere. When the whole world rejected you, when there was no body to say, you are my Lord. When there was nobody to accommodate you, you walked in. He gave you accommodation. He clotted you. He carried you in his hands. And said, son, you are my choosing one. You are my best Lord. Am I talking to someone? Yes, sir. That's the God I'm talking about. Who kept you? That is the God. That is the God. And you went to pain, sickness, and all kinds of frustration. That God was just there watching you. At the time they, you were afflicted with sickness, they were watching you to die. They said, let us see how she's going to survive it. Let us see how he's going to survive it. The God came and said, no. This one, I have planned for him. I have planned for her. She cannot die now. I am talking about that God. I am talking about God who has kept you since the beginning of your life. Although you came from a tough family, a family where everybody knew that to be a witchcraft practice people or something, and he kept you. When all admission was over in the school, and people said you can't get admission, you came with feet. The Lord said, Press on, press on, my son, press on, my daughter, press on. You apply the first year, you fail. The second year, you fail. The third year, you got admission. I'm talking about that God. I am talking about God that the day you took your bag, you were leaving your home. And you said to your parents, I'm going to school. Your dad looked at you and said, I don't know the kind of school you are going to. I don't know because as, as far as I'm concerned, I know you are not praying. And you went to school and the Lord made you the best. 
I'm not the echo. The Lord made you a standing. The Lord made you a standing, and the Lord gave you the flat color. And you came back home and said to your dad, one day, I said, Dad, I'm a graduate. And the dad looked at you, said, Son, daughter, I'm proud of you. I am talking about that God who is the maker of the whole universe. Now look at this. Many of us, we know him as a maker of the whole universe. And many of us, we don't know him as our father. We don't know him as our father, as a loving father, a true father, a good father, who is more precious, who is ready to be there for you more than everybody in the whole world. Can I say something to you? Yes. God wants you to prosper. He wants you to prosper that the way you want yourself to prosper. He wants you to have a car to build the best of the house and to be comfortable to be happy that the way you wish yourself is the best and the most lovely father in the whole world. Am I say something here? This God is so wonderful that at a time in our lives where all the human race was at the edge of the defeat, destruction, disappointment, rejection, dejection, sickness, disease, poverty, action. The Bible says he, he said in heaven, Oh, I like said. And there was no body. The several elders could not go. The 24 elders could not go. The angels could not go. The one stood. His name is the lion on top of Judah. Stood up and said, Father, we go. And the father looked at him and said, You are the only son I have with me. Say, I will go. He took the pain.